Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. We are talking about combinatorics right now, more precisely uh, about permutations, even more precisely about partial permutations. Um, well, obviously this lecture is on unizor.com, which I strongly recommend you to use just as a course of mathematics for, well, for young students. <clears throat> All right, so what we have learned so far about permutation was that if you have a group of n different objects and you would like to put them in certain order, well, you have to pick the object number one out of this pile, right? So you have n different choices. With each of these choices, you have n minus one choices for object number two because object number one is already chosen, right? So it's picked from the pile. You have n mi minus one left. So you have n minus one choices for the second one. Now, with each of these, we will have n minus two choices for object number three, etc., etc., down to the very end um, of this line. And that gives you n factorial different permutations, different positioning, if you wish, of this um, set of n different objects into uh, an ordered set. n factorial different ways of ordering, if you wish. All right. So we have number of objects, and we have certain places we are putting them in. Place number one, place number two, place number n. Well, this lecture is um, about a slight deviation from this particular task. What if we don't have as many as n different places? We have to place certain number of objects from this group into a smaller number of places. Let's say we have k places. Now, <clears throat> so basically our task is not only to position certain objects uh, uh, in, in certain order, but we have to actually pick only k objects out of n and put them into these positions. Well, we will just do exactly the same um, uh, 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 logic as we used in, in case we want to place all of these um, objects into an ordered set. Let's just examine how many choices we have. For object number one out of these k, we have to pick out of the whole set of n objects, which means we have n different choices. With each of these, we have n minus one choices for uh, the next object, object number two. So this is number one, this is number two, n minus two, obviously, etc. Now, what is the last member? It's supposed to have a number k, right? Because we have only k places to put our object. So the numerical sequence would be this is number one, this is number two, and the last one would be number k. Well, as it very easily seen, it's n minus k plus 1. Well, this is the formula, basically. It's called a number of permutations from n objects k. k permutation, well, uh, we have to um, uh, have uh, objects, k objects out of n. That's what it is. So the first index I use the number of objects given, and the second index is the number of places to to put these chosen k objects in. Well, sometimes it's written p uh, p and k on the top or on the left. Sometimes there are different. Uh, notations sometimes it's just a function p of n comma k so whatever the notation is 
this is the final formula which we have derived now I usually insist on proving these things and we have proved um, by induction the formula for um, permutations of uh, n objects regular permutations now this is called partial permutations and the formula can be very very easily uh, proven by induction by let's say by k or something like this so the logic is exactly the same the proof is exactly the same logically speaking obviously as the proof for um, the formula for the regular permutations now the only thing which I would like to add is I would like to make this formula a little bit shorter <coughs> You see what I did here? I cut it. So what did I cut? Let's just examine what is before this cut line. It's n minus k plus 1. What's after? It's n minus k. Right? So out of all the uh, numbers from 1 to n, I'm using only these ones and these from 1 to n minus k I'm not using which means I can actually um, say that I have divided the whole product of all numbers from 1 to n which is n factorial by the product from 1 to n minus k which is n minus k factorial so this is exactly the same formula this one is the same as this one <coughs> I'm just um, making longer this product by all the numbers from from 1 to n minus k and then I divide basically by the same number from 1 uh, the product from 1 to n minus k right so this is a little shorter formula now I don't want usually to tell you okay remember this formula or something like this now remember the way how we derive this formula the logic of this formula how many choices are for the place number one how many choices for place number two etc this way you will always be able to repeat the logic whenever it's necessary you just have to recognize the problem as the problem of partial permutations and then just repeat the logic I do encourage you to not remember formula I do, uh, I, I do encourage to remember the logic behind this formula all right now here we have a little twist which I wanted to talk about <coughs> so we are talking about partial permutation of k objects out of n right now if we are talking about partial permutations of n objects out of n well that's actually the regular permutations that's all the different regular permutations the set of n objects can have right so this is supposed to be equal to our original formula of number of permutations of n objects right partial permutations of n out of n is exactly the same as regular permutation of n objects right now let's talk about this formula now the formula before that the formula which says this this formula obviously um, is uh, correct in both cases because if k is equal to n it would be n minus n plus 1 which is 1 so we have a product of all numbers from 1 to n but this formula gives us a little different so if n is equal to k then this formula gives zero factorial right n minus n minus n wow zero factorial is something new <clears throat> we always 
excuse the noise. Um, now, we always are saying that factorial is the product of numbers from 1 to our number. Well, this is zero factorial, so it makes absolutely no sense in that particular definition. So, what do we do? We have to get n factorial, right? Because p uh, n comma n partial uh, permutations of n out of n supposed to be n factorial. So how can I get n factorial? By one and only one way. I have to define zero factorial as equal to one. Well, it seems to be quite artificial right now. First of all, I can define zero factorial because it has absolutely no relationship with the original definition of the factorial. So the factorial for numbers 1, 2, 3, etc. is defined exactly as I said before, the product of all the numbers from 1 to that number. Product of zero, uh, the, the, the factorial of zero is not defined, so I can just introduce a new definition. Now, uh, as I said, it seems to be a little artificial, but well, there are two considerations I would like to, to, to make, two points. First of all, something like uh, 3.5 to a zero degree. We all know that everything in zero degree, the power of zero is equal to one, by definition, basically. <coughs> at the same time, at the same time, um, I would like to say that higher mathematics do justify this type of thing. You see, the factorial as I defined it right now, 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 1 times 2, n factorial is 1 times 2 times etc. times n. This is defined, this is the function which is defined only for natural arguments, right? Now, there is a special function in higher mathematics, it's called gamma function, gamma function which basically for all integer uh, positive numbers for all natural numbers is exactly equal to n factorial but it's defined for every number in between and uh, in particular this function at uh, 0 is equal to 1 as well as this function at 1 is also equal to 1 so if you have the graph of n factorial right now I can say that 1 factorial is 1 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial is 6, so these are points. And this function, the gamma function, defines it this way. Actually, it's this way. It looks like a, a little parabola here. Alright, so the 0 factorial equals to 1 is justified by existence of this gamma function and also some considerations which we had in some other um, uh, 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 departments of, of mathematics where things also didn't seem to be very you know, natural but nevertheless we accepted them. So accept that zero factorial is one by definition, end of story. Forget about gamma function, forget about all these higher mathematics, we just define it on elementary level zero factorial is one and the factorial for all natural numbers is equal to a product of uh, numbers from one to that number. Okay, <coughs> with this definition, this is true, and there is no problem with any formula using this uh, uh, using the product from n to n minus k plus, k, k plus one, or using a, a shorter formula n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. Well, this is the theory of partial permutations. Now, let's just have a couple of examples, just to make sure that we understand everything. All right, example number one, I have four examples here. You have 10 dishes on the menu. So you came to a restaurant, you have 10 dishes on the menu, and you would like to have a dinner, so you would like to have three uh, dishes. I'm not right now talking about main and appetizer, etc., etc. Let's just be simple. There are 10 dishes and you have to pick three. And this is the dinner, which means you have to take the first, the second, and the third. Right? Three course meal. Well, this is a typical problem uh, of partial permutations because for the first dish, you have 10 choices. Right? 
Okay, after this is done, you have only nine choices left. And we do assume that we don't want to eat the same dish twice or, or three times in a row. All right, so it's always different dishes supposed to be. Uh, now, so the second uh, course, you have nine choices. So with each of these ten, you have nine the second. And with each pair of 90 of the first and the second course, you have eight um, for the third course. So your result is 720. That's basically a typical partial permutation problem. And you have a couple of others. Very easy one. Okay, now we have a traveling salesman who has to visit six different stores with samples of uh, the products he represents, some manufacturer or whatever. Now, um, in the morning he thinks that, well, the stores are positioned in such a way that he can visit only four stores to visit today. So, now he has to, number one, choose which store stores to visit, number two, in what sequence, right? So that's exactly the problem of partial permutations. So out of the six stores he has to visit, he has to pick one as the number one, <coughs> and that would actually give you six choices, right? So out of these six he has to pick which one he will visit first, then he has to pick which one he has to visit the second and he has only five choices left because one is already visited then for number three store he has only four choices and for number four he has three choices if you multiply them you get something which you will calculate and that's the answer that's how many different choices plans for the day he might actually have so he has this num this number of different plans for today of how to visit the stores with his products. Next. You have a word. I chose the word money. And mind you, all that letters are different. It's very important and I always emphasize that when we are talking about permutations, so far we were dealing with permutations of different objects. When objects are, some of the objects are identical, would be a subject of another lecture. Uh, okay, so you have the word money. It has five letters, right? And you have to construct different three-letter words, like M-O-N, or N-O-Y, or Y-M-O, etc., etc. So, how many different three letters three letter words how many three letter words can be constructed out of these five different letters well exact exactly the same logic you see i'm repeating the logic again and again because i would like you to remember the logic not the formula so how many choices we have for the first letter well five obviously right with each of these, we can have only four letters left, so we have four different choices for the second letter. And for the third letter, correspondingly, we have one less, which is three. And that's the result, which is, what, 60. So 60 different three-letter words we can construct out of these five letters. And obviously, I'm not talking about which words do exist in English language or not, we're talking about formal, formal words. All right? And the last example I have, which is, again, exactly the same type. Okay, you bought a, an old house which needs renovations, okay? So you have um, invited somebody who basically listed everything which needs to be done. Like, so there are 20 different renovations. One to different renovations, that's a lot of work. We can do only once a week, let's say. One renovation <coughs> per week. 
So let's think about the first months. So the first month it has four weeks and uh, approximately. So uh, we can make four different renovations. So question is, what are how many different plans for the first month's renovation um, we, we, we can in, in theory have? Well, again, if we will consider that all renovations are more or less um, uh, requiring more or less the same amount of efforts, and they're all different, of course, um, we, we have a lot of choices. Uh, for the first week, we have 20 different choices. We can pick any one of those and do it. With each of them, we will have 19 choices for the second week renovation efforts, right? And for the third, we have 18, and then we have 17. So for four weeks, we have that many different combinations of different plans which we can uh, make for the months, for the first months. For the second months, it would be 16, 15, 14, and 13, the product of these numbers, because the number of renovations is gradually decreasing. But for the first months, it's this. Okay, um, that's it. Uh, that's all I wanted to talk about uh, as far as the partial permutations are. So again, um, think about the logic behind. The logic basically is multiplying a diminishing numbers from the biggest to whatever is necessary. Um, if you want, you can always derive the formula of this in a, uh, in a factorial uh, fashion remembering that 0 factorial is equal to 1 and uh, obviously I do recommend you to go to unisor.com and go through the notes for this lecture um, uh, and whatever the problems will be presented so thanks very much and good luck <laughs>